So today we're finally taking a look at the Awami. This is a ship that I've been waiting for for quite some time. As we all know, it was on the promotional material for this update. And yeah, it's a secondary Japanese battleship at tier 9. It's got a lot of competition to worry about. But before we get into this, I do have to mention that as a part of this CC program now, I did ask that this ship be credited to my account. And that's all that I'm required to say. The ship is kind of mediocre. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I know you guys are probably thinking that, oh, it's a secondary battleship. He's gonna love it. And honestly, it's pretty fun when you get these secondary opportunities. We just click on a Des Moines and he melts, right? We're not shooting this guy with our main guns at all. And he dies incredibly fast. It's because these secondaries are Ohio Schlieffen levels of accurate. The DPM is absolutely insane for a tier nine battleship. For any battleship, in fact, the DPM is really, really good. It's one of the best in terms of hitting damage per minute out of any battleship in the game. The torps are a fun gimmick that can definitely come in handy. They're Japanese torps that go 20 kilometers and have actually 20K alpha as well. So the main guns don't quite finish them, but yeah, the torps definitely will. I'm showing you these fun moments because, well, it's nice to have an entertaining video, right? But not every game is looking like this. There are some extremely good moments though. Like most secondary battleships, cherry picking the best moments can look amazing. But for the most part, the guns have been incredibly underwhelming. And since that's our primary source of damage, since the game is pretty passive at high tier, I think we all can agree on that these days, we're not in secondary range all the time, and relying on essentially Nagato guns is pretty tough at tier 9, especially in those up tiers into tier 10 and super ships. The guns are better than Nagato guns. It's not a fair comparison, more accurate. The Sigma's actually pretty good at 2.1. The reload is just all right, considering it's eight 410 millimeter guns. But they're decent. They do hit. When they do hit, they deal decent damage. The Citadel damage is pretty good, but this ship really does need to be at close ranges. And since it's a Japanese battleship, it doesn't get anything fancy like an Icebreaker or Turtleback. It pseudo gets a Turtleback. It's not angled enough to actually bounce anything. It works more like a bit of spaced armor. But this ship has an above water citadel, so it's very, very easy to get citadeled if you angle incorrectly. And it's very easy to angle incorrectly since you can't fire all your secondary turrets if you're angling perfectly in this ship. You have to give a little bit more broadside than is comfortable to get all of these 100 millimeter turrets firing. There are two types of secondaries on this ship. There's the 100 millimeter guns. They're basically Harugumo guns and there are the 155 millimeter guns. With IFHE, they both pen 32 millimeters of armor, and that's what you're seeing in this video. I'm taking a full secondary build for the most part. I'm trying a few hybrid builds here and there, but I'm really doing a full secondary build, and it's produced some pretty decent results. Although I do still think the hybrid build is going to be better. Like I said, when these guns hit, they hit pretty hard. And I think that running a hybrid build focusing on main gun reload and accuracy in the equipment slots, like I've been mentioning for quite a while now, a lot of my videos focused around brawling battleships, is talking a lot about this hybrid build. I think this ship also would benefit from that. The main problem though in taking a hybrid build is you reduce the secondary range by a lot. This ship only has 10.5 kilometer maximum range on these secondaries maximum. So as soon as you take your main gun accuracy instead of the secondary upgrade for your upgrade slot, you're looking at 9.2 kilometers of secondary range. And if you're trying to use your secondaries, 9.2 is pretty close. At that point, most tier 10 battles, you're not going to see 9.2 unless you're extremely close and very good at using islands. Honestly, you need a map that is favorable for even making use of these islands. In this case, we're going to do a decent job of that. The C cap and the A cap can be really good brawling opportunities, assuming the enemy team decides to push in and you can push into them as well. That's really what it comes down to. This ship is at its best 
when you're able to play in secondary range. At longer ranges, I've really found this ship quite frustrating to deal with. It's not even a particularly good kiting ship, thanks to the squared off back that results in a lot of shots being trapped in there. I've been penned for some pretty insane amounts of damage uh, from the stern where those uh, torpedoes are. In this game though, an Alabama pushes up, okay. We should be able to deal with him, assuming that we're able to angle in time. Secondaries firing off both sides. It's a lot of fun, right? It's a ton of fun to play in this close range role. But I gotta say, given that this ship has torps, it has eight guns, it has secondaries, sounds a lot like a Prince Ruprecht, doesn't it? The tier nine German battleship, battle cruiser, I should say. And I think in almost every way, that ship is better. I think at close range, the secondaries, the performance of that ship is just going to be better than this one. And I think at mid ranges, the Awami might be a little bit better thanks to its maybe a little bit stronger main guns. But if you're wondering if you should be paying for a premium tier nine secondary battleship and wanting it to be a better experience than the Prince Ruprecht, certainly it's not better than the Georgia. I think we, I think we all know that, but Prince Ruprecht, I think is a reasonable example of a tier nine German secondary brawling battleship. I do think it is better than the Awami. I don't think the Awami is necessarily a bad ship. In fact, I think it's very interesting. I think it's a cool example of what you can do to a class that tends to want to focus on long range. That's the Japanese battleships. They're long range focused. How can you make a brawling close range battleship? Well, the reason this ship I think can work at close range is really thanks to these gun angles. I think you've probably noticed throughout this video that I've been able to fire my guns at some extremely sharp angles. In fact, forward facing, I can shoot all of my guns off at 25 degrees. And facing the rear, my front guns are actually good for 27 degrees. So that's what makes this ship work at close range. It's one of my main complaints about the Kerfurst is that the ship just can't play at close range while getting all of its guns firing. And that's pretty important when half of your firepower is in the back. This ship can very much take advantage of its improved turret angles. However, you have to be very careful. This is an example of me not really doing the best job. Uh, my inexperience with the Awami is definitely showing in this specific clip. So keep an eye out for the bottom left corner. Notice how I'm able to fire my back guns as soon as that angle indicator on my ship is starting to say 25 degrees. And we do a good job of bouncing the Kremlin here, right? 25, 27 degrees. These are very much auto bounce territory angles. Notice I'm also doing a really, really good job of forcing the Kremlin to go more broadside to me in order to shoot me. By traveling in such a way where I'm putting my ship further behind his ship, this will force him to turn more broadside to me in order to shoot me. And that should open him up to be citadeled. Although, you know, like dispersion didn't work when he was flat broadside, dispersion might not work when he opens up to shoot us again. Importantly though, I make a massive mistake. We're gonna try and shoot him here, but we get absolutely crushed in return. And notice on the angle indicator, I was showing more than 30 degree angle. So this ship, while it has insane turret angles itself, look at here where we're going to be able to shoot at again, 25 degrees looking forward, it's insane. And that's where we're getting our tankiness from, is that angling. As soon as you miss angle by even five degrees, you're taking some huge, huge hits. Finally, we do manage to get our citadels in on the Kremlin. The inconsistent guns definitely are a bit of an issue on this thing. But in these close range fights, notice I'm getting good damage. I'm able to hold my own, assuming I'm doing a good job of angling, using all of my resources available to me. The torps are very important. Don't forget about them. And the secondaries are obviously quite good, but these close range fights don't happen all the time. And since it's a tier nine and you're getting pulled up into tier 10 super ship games a lot of the time, it's tough to make use of this ship's strengths. But keep in mind guys, these are just my first impressions. As you can see, I haven't played a ton of this ship yet. I still don't even have 100,000 XP on it. And I have been using some pretty heavy boosters because I was actually out of credits since I was buying a bunch of 
flags to help with fire duration and healing. I think that this ship is probably one that you should pass on, honestly. That's my first impression. It's a ship that it's definitely not better than Georgia. It's maybe not the fair, fairest comparison, but that's the tier nine secondary battleship, right? I think that the Prince Ruprecht is definitely better. The Freddy, I think is tankier and better at closer ranges. Mid ranges where this ship should excel, I've just been let down by these main guns. Maybe I need to play it more, but the clips I've shown you where this ship is hitting citadels, that tends not to happen. The primary examples are the ones where the shells are just bracketing broadside ships. It's a Japanese battleship. It has pretty poor vertical dispersion, right? That's the problem with Yamato as well. The shells tend to bracket around broadside ships. That's why it's really good against angled targets. The overmatch on Yamato really carries it. And since it's got bad vertical dispersion, well, if the target's angled, it's gonna hit them reasonably well. Whereas Awami doesn't get that overmatch either. So as far as this ship is concerned, I have been trying to run this full meme secondary build. This is not really what I would recommend though. After playing for it with it for a while, it's a lot of fun if you are interested in just going out there and having fun and not having the most competitive build. But if you're looking for a ship that's going to be consistent in a lot more games, you're probably gonna wanna not take IFHE so that you can actually swap to the HE on this ship and actually have okay fire chance. Gun feeder would be important just in case you're getting yellowed by a DD or for the ability to change shells quickly. I'd probably still want to take secondaries since it is a ship that wants to play with its secondaries, but I don't know, it's tough, it's tough. The commander build is pretty tough at the moment on this ship. Go back and check out some of my more recent secondary battleship videos, like the one I was talking about in tier nine ranked, where I was doing more of those hybrid builds. I'd probably wanna run main battery mod three, and I'd also probably want to run aiming systems mod one. That'd be a good hybrid build where you're still able to sometimes use the secondaries and have a good time, but even with this full build, right? 10 and a half kilometers range, as soon as we go to this hybrid build, 9.2. Do you think at nine at tier nine, tier 10 games, 9.2 is worth investing a ton in secondaries for? I'm gonna leave that up to you, but for me personally, it's tough. It's tough to make use of this ship's secondaries. Georgia, at least, we can make use of it with that 11.3 range since we don't have to sacrifice our main gun's accuracy while taking the secondary battery mod. We get our accuracy here. And as far as the German battleships go, well, even with the hybrid builds, you can get decent range on these secondaries, right? 10 kilometers range, and I don't even have my captain on here right now. It's, it's tough. Like I said, I'm, if you can't tell, pretty conflicted on this ship because I've had some excellent games, some excellent clips like you've seen, but the things you aren't seeing are the pretty mediocre parts. So let me know what you think in the comments below about this thing. I really think it's an interesting ship, but it's not that great. And I'm okay with that. I don't think every premium that comes into the game needs to be meta-defining overpowered. And just that this ship is interesting, I think is enough. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.